Well, hello everybody and greetings from beautiful Denver, Colorado. Today we are driving west into the Rocky Mountains. It is our intention to drive up higher and higher, as high as one can safely drive in the United States. We get off Interstate 70 by Idaho Springs, where we begin the ascent to Mount Evans. First we take uh, State Route 103 up to Echo Lake. We are having breakfast uh, right here at the lodge, right next to this bird feeder with this view of the mountains. Since I suffered from altitude sickness a couple of days ago at the Loveland Pass, uh, I get this oxygen canister, just in case. There is a $10 fee to use this road to go up to Mount Evans and the sign says 24 degrees Fahrenheit at the summit. Ooh. This is the highest paved road in the United States, going up to a staggering 14,130 feet above sea level. And the summit is about 100 feet higher. As we gain altitude, we start seeing less and less trees and patches of snow here and there. We are now above the tree line, tundra climate, and there are no guardrails. Any distraction could be fatal here, as the car could plunge hundreds of feet down the side of the mountain. It is 40 miles from the checkpoint to the top, but we are going to make a quick stop about 9 miles up at Summit Lake. Here we get our first views of Mount Evans. Yes, it is that tall mountain to the left. Now to the front of us. Here the road gets a little rougher as we arrive at Summit Lake, where we're going to take a quick break from the White Knuckle Drive. The lake is still frozen in mid-June. We continue going up, relentlessly into the thin air, now at around 13,000 feet above sea level, about 4,000 meters. At some point, I have to stop. I mean, look at this view. My goodness. And we continue going up. We are almost at the top. And here we are. These ruins belong to the Mount Evans Crest House, which had a restaurant and a gift shop, uh, but burned down in 1979, so there it is. Now we'll attempt to climb to the summit of uh, Mount Evans. Let me tell you, it is not the easiest of hikes, and I am freezing, by the way. <laughs> Definitely came underdressed. That structure down there uh, next to the Crest House is the Mayor Womble Observatory. At one point it was uh, the world's highest optical observatory, now it's just the third highest. Still pretty good though. There's a lot of very slippery eyes, so I must be careful. At one point after uh, slipping and falling I almost chickened out and turned around, but eventually made it. Here's a 360 degree view from the top, my hand is shaky because of the cold and high winds. 
The best reward for the climbing effort is this view from the top of the Rockies, 14,271 feet, about 4,350 meters above sea level. By the way, I did use the oxygen spray a couple of times on the way up, <laughs> very useful. It's a summit, all right. Now, I gotta go all the way down there. It's wonderful. Well, mission accomplished. On the way down, I lose the trail a couple of times, but eventually I find it. Uh, Everest is next. <laughs> I was just up there a few minutes ago. Going down now. Down and down we go when I feel like stopping at every single viewpoint. the herping turns. Let's stop here for a minute. Uh, check it out. I mean, I mean, ah, oh, looking at this view. We pass again by Summit Lake, not stopping this time. Here we stop again for a moment to see this great view of Echo Lake. And we are once again below the timberline. We pass by Echo Lake one more time. Eventually we make it down to Idaho Springs and the junction with I-70. Idaho Springs was founded in 1859 during the early days of the Pikes Peak Gold Rush. This is a very touristy downtown area. Next, we are going to visit the Phoenix Mine. The way to the mine is through this uh, dirt road. 
They have an area along uh, this creek where visitors can try their luck at gold panning, a time-honored uh, tradition, uh, while they wait uh, after the tour. And they have some of these uh, artifacts uh, from the good old mining days. These uh, tiny rodents are running all over the place, uh, very friendly folks, not afraid at all of humans. The mine is owned by the oldest continuous gold mining family in Colorado. And the tour is uh, very nice, actually. And the guide, a very charismatic and friendly guy. It is a great tour, especially for the children, for the kids. He goes out of the way to get them interested. Watch out. They were all midgets back in the day. Malnutrition keeps you under five foot seven. This old drill right here is called a Widowmaker drill. It was invented back in 1878. This is called a lucky bucket right here. Always brought up more gold in the other bucket, so they call it lucky bucket. Since then, we put it in here, people are rubbing this thing from all over the world for luck. Ooh, now, do you folks see that ugly gray stuff in the rocks? The dull ugly gray is silver. The little sparkles are pyrite crystals. The brown above your head is sand and mud, no good. Danger is a weird green color, buddy. But our green stuff's got gold in it, and you can touch this stuff. Go up there and look at the pretty yellow stuff in the rocks. That's all gold in the rocks. All this gold vein on any tour anywhere in the world, we checked. Now, we used to let you touch it right here. Do you see the vein of gold in there, buddy? Is that yellow in the rock? If you go up to the creek and you find a rock as big as a golf ball that's sticking out of the side, that's worth between six and 10,000. Any kind of rock from uranium on down that's got little bits of gold in it, they call it gold ore. There's lots of rocks with gold in it. We chuck it all inside the drum and turn the machine on here. This machine makes that drum go round and round. All those steel balls in there. I bring that sand with the gold in it down here and we throw it in a little box over there in the corner. The box has little holes in the bottom, lets the sand drip out real slow when you put a water hose in there with it. Next, we stir up that machine in the corner, which grabs the leg of the table, and the whole table starts shaking when you turn the machine on. That's what I call shaking table, it really shakes. The shaking helps the sand and the mud move across the table, buddy, because the table leans downhill that way, and downhill this way, just a little bit past the thing here. The sand comes out of the bottom of the box and vibrates across those ribs down there, heading downhill. Gold, silver, copper, all that good stuff we got in here is really heavy. It's so heavy it gets stuck behind the ribs. Then the heavy stuff follows the ribs all the way down here and falls on a concentrate bucket. And that's it in a nutshell. I think it was a time and money very well spent. Moving right along, let's uh, take this newly opened expressway to Central City, called the Central City Parkway. Central City, along with a neighboring Black Hawk, it was originally a gold rush town. In the 1990s, casino gambling was introduced, and even though Central City built the nice expressway, Black Hawk is still more popular. You know why? They have more casinos. The whole place is kind of depressing, like most gambling towns, in, in my opinion, anyways. I was hoping to find a more authentic uh, frontier town, but it is what it is. A little bit to the east, and without really noticing, we are now in Black Hawk. Uh, same thing, casinos and more casinos. They even have shuttle buses. Our next and last destination today is Boulder, Colorado, a college town. To get there, we are taking the Clear Creek Canyon Road. To the left, we see these mountains called the Flat Irons, very famous. Boulder is home to the University of Colorado Boulder, which we can see right here, to our right.
we are going to have a late lunch or perhaps early dinner by this nice pedestrian area called the Pearl Street Mall. Very lively with all the street musicians and performers. Guess what? Time's up. We do have a plane to catch, in case you didn't know. I hope you have enjoyed our adventure here in and around Denver, as well as our RV trip around the Four Corners region of the United States. If you like all these videos, please remember to subscribe so you stay up to date and also follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. You can also show your support by clicking on the eye icon on the top left corner of your screen and making a donation. Anything helps really. That way you can contribute in the production of these uh, videos and I would appreciate that very, very much. You would be in a sense a producer of the show. Check out my other videos at videos.roadnomad.com and until the next adventure, thank you so much for watching and see you on the road.